Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. I wanted to try and illustrate a two-step binomial option pricing model. And to illustrate, I'll use it to price an option on a stock index. In this case, let's assume it's the Dow Jones Utility Index. So as usual, when pricing an option, I need to give some input assumptions. Here, I'm going to assume the asset price is 500. In this case, that means the asset is the stock index. So we'll assume the stock index has a value of 500. And now we we'll want to price a European call option on that index with a strike or exercise price of 500. So this is an option on the stock index where the strike is equal to the current value of the index. So the option is currently at the money. It has no intrinsic value. To build out the binomial tree, I need to specify how much time between nodes on the tree. I'm going to use 3 months or 0.25 years. I need an assumption about the volatility of the underlying asset, which recall in this case the underlying asset is a stock index. I'm going to assume 30%. I need a riskless rate as usual, 5%, and then I'll just assume that the dividend yield on the stock index, in this case the Dow Jones utility, is 2%. Those are my input assumptions. And now to construct the two-step binomial tree, there's a few variables I need to calculate. U and D refer to the size or magnitude of an up and down jump, respectively. So in this case, I got a U of 1.16 about. That means if I take an up path in the binomial, I'm going to go up by 16%. Down is going to be less than 1. In this case, I got 0.86. That means if we go down, we're going to go down by uh, minus about 14%. Both U and D here are functions of volatility. The greater the volatility of the underlying asset, the larger U and the smaller will be D. So U and D tell us about how, up, how far up or down each of our branches go on the binomial. A is a number here, I won't go into the formula, that feeds into P. And P denotes the probability of an up jump. This is binomial, which means that at each node, we can only either go up or down. So we only really need P because the only alternative if we don't go up is to go down with probability of 1 minus P. So you can now see what we have are P is the probability of an up step or up jump. And if we go up, we're going to go up with magnitude of U. If we don't go up with probability of P, that means we're going down with probability of 1 minus P. And if we go down, we're going down with size or magnitude of D. That's all we need to construct the binomial tree here, which has shows two instruments. And that's why I've colored this with green and blue, because we have to think about the two step instruments separately in order to conduct the binomial process, which has two major steps in addition to just being a two-step binomial. Green is the underlying asset, in this case the stock index. The first process is to build the tree forward in time. And here we've only got two steps. You can see here's time, zero, that's today, in three months, and then again in six months. The first process is to build forward with the stock index. That's the underlying asset, such that that stock index today at 500 either goes up or down. And in this case, if it, then once it goes down at the first node, it's then subsequently going to go either up or down. So this simple two-step binomial only has three possible outcomes at the end of six months. It also here recombines, it's a recombining binomial, that's because if I start the stock index at 500, take an up jump, then take a down jump, I end up at 500 again, which is the same place I end up if I instead went down first and then up. So as we build this tree out, you can see the 500 today in three months is either going to go up with probability of P or down with probability of 1 minus P. If it goes up, it simply goes up by 500 
multiplied by u, the size of our up jump. So in this case, if it goes up, it goes up by 16% and change. And so the stock goes up to 580. Subsequent to that, in the second step, it can either go up again or back down to 500. So that first process is to build out these underlying assets here shown in green. Then when we get to the end here of the European call option that has six months to expiration, that's two steps, three months for each step, then what do we have? What we have are three possible future asset prices, or in this case, future prices for the index. And in this case, if we happen to get lucky and this, the index went up and then up again, the index has a value of 674. What will the option be worth? We only need to back out the strike price, which was 500. So 674 minus 500 gives us this, the intrinsic future value of the option if the stock takes this path. And similarly, we can see here, if the stock ends up back at 500, the strike was 500, the option here in blue has zero value. Also here, in the case where the stock is underwater, the option has zero value. So you can see when we get to the end of the tree, it's pretty easy to just imagine an exercise of the option to compute the future intrinsic values. And now we're ready to conduct the final step in the binomial, which is called backward induction. And that's where we really apply time value of money principles. Because what we now have are three possible option values in the future. And so what we only really need to do two things. We need to adjust them for probabilities and then discount them to the present value. So if I go to this node here, and this is maybe the trickiest part of the whole thing, what I'm computing here is I'm looking, the, what's the value of the option at three months? Well, it's based on this node here, value of the option, and this node here. So it's taking this node times the probability P that it will go to this node, and adding it to this node, which is the probability it will go to this node. So it's taking a weighted average, really, based on the probability, and then discounting that over the three months. So this ends up being a discounted probability weighted average of the two nodes in front. Similarly, I do that with this node here. This one's simple because this is zero. That's because I can either go to zero or to zero. Discounting zero three months to the present gives me a zero. That was one backward induction, then I do another to get here. This option value is the discounted weighted average of these two nodes, which in this, under these assumptions, you can see that $40 is uh, pretty close enough to half between 84 and zero. And so this node here gives me the present value on a probability weighted basis of the option based on the fact we build out these stock prices. And so that's the logic of the two-step binomial. And I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.